You know, guys, has there ever been a more embarrassing situation in boxing than what we're seeing recently with Demetrius Andrade, or Andrade, however you say his name? <laughs> like, this situation, I was thinking about this recently, as I was sort of going back and forth with a few people in the comment sections of a few videos and a few posts and whatnot. This situation, I have to say, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it in boxing, just in terms of how much of an absolute arse people have made of themselves in regards to it. So, what am I talking about? So, Demetrius Andrade, as I'm sure many of you on here already know, he's a fighter who... I'd say for the past five years or so, he's basically built his reputation on the idea, the narrative that he's the type of fighter who wants all the smoke, right? That he's a guy who's willing to fight anybody, anywhere, and that he's the boogeyman, essentially, that nobody wants to fight him, that he's a badass, that he's the baddest of the bad, and that, you know, he, he's essentially this guy that has been sort of blacklisted from the sport. And yeah, he's just the, the scariest dude out there. Nobody wants to go near him. You know, he's classic high-risk, low-reward. You know, Canelo Alvarez is ducking him. Gennady Golovkin's ducking him. The Charlo brothers are ducking him. Billy Joe Saunders is ducking him. You know, <laughs> just all the championship-level guys in and around about his weight division just want nothing to do with him. He's just the ultimate boogeyman. You know, that's what we've been hearing. For the past five years or so on here. And he's a fighter who many people within the YouTube boxing community have really hung their hat on. And really gotten behind and really perpetuated this narrative of him being this boogeyman. Well I'd say in the past year or so. That narrative not only has it been completely and utterly disproven. But it's been absolutely shattered. To the point where it's become an absolute embarrassment in my opinion. So... I was going back and forth with a few people, as I said, in the comment sections of a few a few videos here and there, and um, a few posts and whatnot. And one of the things that kind of took me by surprise, I didn't realise the amount of fanboys that Demetrius Andrade had, because it's interesting to me, it's, a, it's another one of them situations, it's similar to Rigandau and Andre Ward and guys like that, where you notice these guys seem to have a lot of sycophants on the internet and people that are really willing to get behind them and really willing to defend them to the death online. But for some reason, they don't love them enough to actually watch their fights. You know, they don't love them enough to actually buy their pay-per-views or buy tickets to their fights and actually financially support them. Because when it comes to these guys, you know, like I said, they've got all these sycophants on the internet but somehow they're not able to sell tickets. Somehow they're not able to do big numbers on TV and whatnot. You know, the, these guys aren't really able to draw any attention to themselves outside of a very particular contingent of sycophants on the internet. It's, re it's really weird to me, you know. That's a situation we've seen with a lot of fighters over the years. There seems to be quite a large contingent of accounts on the internet who have sort of a fetish for these sort of boring, lazy, exploitative type fighters who really don't have anything to offer. Yet when it comes to these fighters in their actual careers and their actual market value and what they actually have to generate for promoters and networks and whatnot, there really doesn't seem to be any return. And I've noticed that about Andrade, he's another one of those guys. Again, he's a Rigandau, he's an Andre Ward, you know, he's that level of fighter, you know, he's the boogeyman. He's a Luis Ortiz, he's the boogeyman, the guy no one wants to fight, you know, he's the, the ultimate technician, the ultimate road warrior. Yet, <laughs> I mean, he just, he doesn't seem to have any fans, whatever. But I didn't realise until very recently just how... Just how deep that went with Demetrius Andrade. Like, every time I post a comment about Demetrius Andrade, I get all these rabid fanboys out of nowhere. Like, literally out of nowhere, these guys come. And they start attacking me and saying, He's a three-weight champion. He's this, that, and the other. He's, he's the greatest ever. What has this guy done? What has that guy done? So, in the past year or so, and this is something that I keep bringing up that keeps getting a, a negative reaction. So... 
Demetrius Andrade was at a, a particular stage of his career about a year ago. He was world champion in his late, in his third division. I believe he was the WBO middleweight champion. I think he still has that title, actually. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure he still has it. And he'd basically been defending that title against pretty standard domestic level opposition. You know, fighting the likes of Liam Williams, the likes of Jason Quigley, you know, relatively inconsequential fights. And he seemed to have no problem knowing where his bread was buttered, you know, fighting on these matchroom cards in the zone, getting paid plenty of money for these easy title defences, but not really selling himself, while all the while claiming that everybody's ducking him, you know, showing up to Canelo Alvarez's press conference and accusing him of ducking and getting absolutely humiliated in the process, you know, talking about Triple G, talking about the Charlos, all these guys who have considerably more to offer the sport than he does, at least in terms of popularity and market value and entertainment value. Yet he was kind of building his reputation on the fact that those guys just weren't interested. You know, they didn't want to fight him and they didn't really see any reason to entertain him, you know. And and yeah, that, that was kind of Andrade's reputation. Now, in the past year or so, he had a perfect opportunity, in my opinion, what would have been a great opportunity to really put his name out there and really sell himself. The WBO, of course, ordered him to fight a mandatory. He had Yanibek Alan Canuli, who is a very hot prospect at the moment, you know, an undefeated guy, amateur standout, rising through the ranks, yet unproven, hasn't really done anything at world level yet, but is a guy who nonetheless has looked great at the level he's been fighting, you know, against the level of opposition he'd been fighting up until that point, he'd exceeded expectations, done what he's supposed to do and then some, you know, stopping the likes of Rob Brandt and whatnot and, you know, announcing himself as a very highly touted and highly regarded prospect. That was a perfect opportunity right there for Demetrius Andrade to fight a guy who was on the come up, who had a, a decent growing fan base. And that would have been a perfect opportunity for Andrade, who was the bigger guy of the two, who of course is the more experienced of the two, definitely more proven at world level, to really announce himself. If he had taken that fight, accepted the fight, and if he'd have beaten Yanibek Alim Kanuli, particularly if he'd have put in a great performance and won the fight by a wide margin, that would have been some statement. Like, that would have been a very, very impressive statement that would have really put Andrade's name out there and really solidified him as a guy who takes on all comers, you know, a guy who wasn't scared to fight people on his level or fight people who are below his level but are on the come up, if you know what I mean. Like, that would have been a, a massive, high risk, low reward type of fight. But there would have been a reward in the long run because it would have looked great on his record. They would have said, yeah, he beat that highly touted amateur standout and rising prospect, Alan Canuli. And, you know, it just, it would have been a, a great opportunity. I think if he'd have fought Yanibek, that would have really um, announced who Andrade was, especially if he were to win the fight convincingly. But of course, that's not what happened. No, in, instead of fighting Yanibek Alam Kanuli and proving himself and establishing himself as a champion, taking on a solid, tough, mandatory opponent, no, Andrade wasn't interested. And he said, you know what? That guy's beneath me. You know, he's below me. I'm the boogeyman who, who nobody wants to fight. I can't get a fight. Look at me. Oh, poor me. Uh, I just can't get the opportunities. Oh, but that guy, nah, he's not on my level. Screw him. I'm not fighting him. For what? <laughs> so yeah, he, he turned that fight down and um, he announced he was he was going to be vacating the title and moving up in weight. So naturally, a lot of the sycophants who had been riding this guy's dick for several years and telling us about how he's the boogeyman and he can't get a fight and nobody wants to fight him, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They um, stuck to their guns because they, they weren't willing to really go back on what they'd been saying just yet, you know, because they're way of rationalizing it was, oh, well, he's going to be moving up in weight, so why, why should he stick around to fight Alan Canuli? You know, who is he? He's going to move up in, in weight and he's going to move on to bigger and better things. So, okay, you think to yourself, well, that kind of makes sense. You know, maybe he's outgrown the division. Maybe he wants to 
challenge some of the big names at 168. So he gets an opportunity. He becomes the mandatory for the WBO title at 168. And the WBO orders an interim fight between him and the undefeated Zach Parker. Now, who is Zach Parker? Well, Zach Parker's an undefeated, relatively unknown contender from the UK. He's a guy I've been watching for several years. And I've been saying on here that I think he's quite a bit underrated. And, and I think he's a very good fighter. And um, yeah, by the way, those of you who have been following me will know that I was picking him to beat Andrade. But that, that that's um, irrelevant at the moment. So he gets the opportunity to, to fight Zach Parker. It's going to be for the interim title, so there's going to be a title of sorts on the line. And he's going to be getting his feet wet in the super middleweight division. And not only that, but he, he gets an even bigger opportunity. So Frank Warren, I believe it was, Queensbury Promo Promotions, who were representing Zach Parker at this point in time, they won the purse bid. And the fight ended up getting scheduled to take place in Derby. So it was a fight in the UK. And it was going to be in a football stadium in Derby. So a football stadium fight. Very big opportunity. A chance to really announce yourself in the UK. Like if, if Andrade had gone over to, to Derby to fight Zach Parker in a stadium. Let's say Andrade beats Zach Parker and beats him in his home city in a stadium. That's a massive, massive amount of exposure right there. A stadium fight against a guy like... Zach Parker, you know, undefeated, fairly um, accomplished amateur himself, and a guy who's rising through the ranks, you know, who's starting to develop a fan base, that's a, that's a fantastic opportunity. If Andrade had won that fight, let's say he went in there in the UK and took the fight to, to Zach Parker and beat him, convincingly beat him in his backyard. What a statement that is. Like, could you imagine what that would do for... Andrade's reputation and, and what that would do for his overall fandom. That would have been a great opportunity for him. So what does he do? He pulls out of the fight, claims that he's injured. So you think, okay, they're going to reschedule the fight, right? It's, it's going to happen later on in the year, maybe. No. Turns out the fight's not happening. Turns out Andrade isn't interested in Zach Parker. He thinks Zach Parker's beneath him and he thinks that the fight isn't worth it. It's too big a risk, whatever. The guy hasn't earned a shot against the great Demetrius Andrade, so he <laughs> he's decided to move back down in weight, and now they're talking about negotiating the fight between him and Yannibek again, I mean, what, what, what can I say about that, do I really need to go any further, I could end the video now, all the people who rode this guy's dick over the years have made an absolute arse of themselves, because what he's proven himself to be, is he, he's proven himself to be absolutely all mouth, and no action. This is a guy whose entire reputation has been built on him being the boogeyman, the fact that certain guys don't want to fight him, and that he just can't get the opportunity. Poor Andrade, oh, it's, he's trying so hard to get the fights, and no one's giving him a chance. And then when it comes to somebody who's on his level, or rising through the ranks wanting a shot at him, nah, screw them, they're not on my level. Who are those guys? Like, why should I fight them? I'm I'm the great Demetrius Andrade. I'm the I'm the ultimate boogeyman. Why should I ever fight a dangerous opponent who's not going to pay me millions of dollars? Now nah, that ain't worth it, man. Boxing is a business. You got to handle my business, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but yeah, what an embarrassing situation we we have with Demetrius Andrade, man. It's this is funny to me because I never I never called him the boogeyman. I never thought that much of. Demetrius Andrade, I mean, yeah, the guy's got a great record on paper, you know, three-weight champion, um, he's got some good wins, I suppose, Liam Williams isn't a bad name, you know, Jack Coke was an okay champion at 154, but it's not as if he really set the world alight in those fights, it's not as if he won those fights conclusively, I mean, had a lot of problems with Liam Williams, had to cheat his way through it, he, um, some people thought he lost to, um, Jack Colquet, I thought the fight could have gone either way, I thought it was a fair decision, I think I just gave it to Andrade, but I wouldn't have argued if he had Jack Colquet winning that fight, it was very close, you know, he was, of course, many people feel he was very lucky to get a decision at 154 against Vans Martirosian, so it's not as if Andrade has really shown us anything in the ring to 
perpetuate this boogeyman narrative. You know, he's not going in there and doing what Arta Baturbiev or Triple G were doing to guys in their prime, is he? You know, he's not taking guys out in a couple of rounds and really, really announcing himself as a destroyer in the ring. You know, he's not Mike Tyson. You know, he's not George Foreman. He's not he, He's not going in there and, and blasting guys out, is he? He's kind of just old manning and outwitting his way to victory. I, I don't see anything there that, that screams boogeyman to me. You know, I, I just see a guy who's relatively boring to watch. A guy who's got some athletic ability, but really not that much skill. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I think that the situation with him is one of the most embarrassing situations I can remember in recent years in boxing. I, I really do believe that. I think it's a it's a joke, man. So, yeah, what we're seeing with um, Andrade, I mean, I, I post a comment where I'm talking about the Zach Parker fight, and I'm like, it's a shame the fight never happened. And I'm getting people responding saying, yeah, Zach Parker's a bum. Andrade doesn't need... You know, these Andrade fanboys. Andrade doesn't need to fight him. Who is he? Who is that guy? Uh, you know, in, in other posts, in other videos, I'm seeing, ah, what did Yanabek ever do to deserve a fight with Zach Parker? Uh, or to deserve a fight with the great Andrade? Uh, Yanabek is, is nobody. What's he done? He's a joke. He's a hype job. Um, I'm like, well, if that's the case, let's see the fight. I'm not saying that Yanibek would beat Zach Pot. I'm, I'm not saying Yanibek would beat Andrade, sorry. But let's see that fight, alright? I, I want to see it, why not? It would tell us a lot more about who Andrade is, you know? if, if Like I said, if he's able to win that fight and win it convincingly, you've got a case for him being a boogeyman. Same with Zach Parker. Again, I thought Zach Parker was going to beat Andrade. So if Andrade went in there and proved me wrong and beat Zach Parker in the UK... What a statement, but never happened, and yeah, <laughs> I just thought I'd make this video because I find this situation funny. I keep seeing comments all over the place trying to defend this Andrade guy, and it's getting bloody embarrassing now, man, it really is. So, guys, just just wake up and stop supporting this, this absolute garbage in boxing, and just have a consistent standard, man. Thanks for watching, and God bless.